A little koi in the wishing pool of Lingshu Mountain has turned into a cute and adorable three-dot-year-dot-old by chance. Picked up by the Lin family, they didn't dislike her as a snack, but instead spoiled her into a treasure. Three older brothers. What do carp want to eat? Brother, buy it for you. Four big nephews. Auntie, we protect you. You can walk horizontally in the village. She wants to repay her kindness by being kind to her. So he used his own coy luck to bring good luck and prosperity to the Lin family. A sick five-dot-year-dot-old boy named Lu Qingling has arrived at the newly built school in the village. The first time they met, Ali saw him faint and wanted to go up and help him, but almost crushed him to death. The second time they met, he was watching the scenery by the river. Ali thought he couldn't think of it and wanted to save him, but he pushed him down the river and almost choked to death. The third time they met, the guard following him immediately stopped her and said, Little girl, please spare my young master. Lili just wanted to help little brother, said Ali, pouting her small mouth in frustration a faint smile appeared on Lu Qingling's pale face and she said, This little girl is a bit cute. Don't make things difficult for her. Keywords of the Novel Group pet at three and a half years old, koi milk bag cute and sweet without pop-ups, group pet at three and a half years old, koi milk bag cute and sweet full collection download, group pet at three and a half years old, koi milk bag cute and sweet latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Picking up a girl. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Picking up a girl The Great Moon Dynasty. In August of the 15th year of the Yongyuan era. Since the heavy rain on June 6, the whole city of Yecheng has been raining heavily for more than a month, and the rainstorm has continued, leading to frequent floods in many places. Taohua village, located a distance from the river to the south of Yi city, was not destroyed by floods due to its high terrain. After the rain stopped for two days. The villagers who went out for refuge gradually returned to their homes, preparing to rebuild their homes after the disaster. In front of a mud wall tiled house courtyard. Lin Changlu and his family are cleaning up the mud in the house and yard. Grandma, Mom, come and take a look. We found a younger sister. Pei heard the noisy voices of her own children. She said to Lin Changlu while fetching water from the well, These children are crazy to think of my younger sister. If I could really pick them up, I would have picked them up long ago. There's no need to have a long string of stinky kids. Sigh, even if I find them now, I can't afford to raise them. Lin Changlu looked up at a group of people running from the distant field ridge. I found that his grandson Lin Dalan seemed to be holding a doll in his arms. Shoji, take a look. Hmm. Upon hearing these words, Pei immediately stood up straight and looked at the children who were walking outside the fence. When she saw the child in Lin Dalong's arms, she immediately exclaimed in surprise, Oh! Where did this child come from? Erlang and Sanlang quickly ran into the yard, competing to answer. Milk, we went to fish and found a little doll in the water. It's not a little doll, it's a younger sister. We didn't even finish picking up the fish before our older brother brought it back. Otherwise, someone else would have picked up our younger sister. Milk, can she be our younger sister? Pei did not immediately answer the words of her two grandsons. Quickly wiping away the water stains on his hands on the linen apron around his waist, he walked up to Lin Dalong with Lin Changlu. The other people in the room heard the sound and quickly walked out. Everyone leaned over and found that she was really a cute, chubby little girl, but she was still unconscious at the moment. Judging from the fabric on her clothes, she doesn't look like an ordinary child. Pei sure took the child from the young man's hand with full eyes and heartache. Oh, this child's clothes are all soaked through. Go boil some hot water, but don't catch a cold. A few small ones quickly got busy. Lin Changlu continued to clean the yard with the others. Pei wiped the little girl's body with warm water and changed into her grandson's old clothes. Lin Changlu and Pei have three sons, and after the eldest and second got married, 
the family each gave birth to two sons. Except for the married daughter. In law, the rest of the family are all male. In other people's homes, this is something that they can't even ask for, but their family misses a little girl very much, which is why they have been giving birth all along. After an hour, the little girl lying in bed slowly opened her eyes. The flickering big eyes, like two bright black pearls, melted the hearts of the group of people gathered in front of the bed. Ali Ben is a red carp that has lived for over 300 years in the wishing pool of Lingshu Mountain. When the immortals on the mountain feed her, they often call her koi there is also an old turtle in the wishing pool, which is not very large but has lived for thousands of years. On the day she regained her consciousness, a handsome and rich man happened to throw a copper coin into the wishing pool. The old turtle used his divine sense to calculate and found that this young master had an extraordinary identity. For a long time afterwards, the man came every day to feed the elixir to Ali like sugar beans. Until one day, there was a sudden gust of wind and lightning in the sky. The old turtle looked at the celestial phenomena and knew that someone was crossing the calamity. The incident of crossing the river has been seen by the old turtle many times, but it is the first time he has seen such a big battle. In the howling wind, the water in the wishing pool spun up into the sky. Ali and an old turtle in the water column in the air are like dumplings in boiling water, bouncing up and down uncontrollably. Suddenly spinning, Mengli lost consciousness. When she woke up, she had transformed into a human and landed in the river next to Peach Blossom Village. At this moment, she is only about three years old in body and mind, not crying or making a fuss, looking curiously at the people in front of her. Lin Sanlang leaned forward and looked at Ali with a bright eye, asking. Sister, what's your name? His mother Yen smiled and lightly patted his shoulder, stinky kid, this little girl is still young at first glance and probably can't even speak clearly. In this era, children from poor families cannot keep up with their nutrition, and they speak and walk late. Many of them only speak and walk when they are two or three years old. Why don't we give her a name? Lin Dalong spoke on the side. His proposal was well received by everyone, just as they were busy researching which name sounded good. Ali suddenly spoke two words in a milky voice, Carp and Carp, Pei looked at her with a gentle smile and asked, You're so smart, little girl. Can you say your name? Are you talking about the pair of a pair? Ali shook his head and said, Li Li. Lin Dalong suddenly remembered that when they found her, there was a group of carp around her. So he quickly brought in the wooden basin that was filled with fish outside. Are you referring to this carp's carp? Ali happily pointed to the carp in the basin and said, Carp, carp. Okay, then we'll call you Li Li. Pei sure liked it more and more as she looked at it. Are you hungry, little Li Li? Ali blinked her big eyes and her pink and tender mouth pouted, I'm hungry. My stomach is hungry. In this way, she turned to everyone in the room, and Lin went to the kitchen to bring the cooked kanji. They have just taken refuge and although there is still some food at home, after the flood, all the crops in the field have been washed away. Their family has a large population and can only save some food, but they still have an extra handful of rice to make kanji for Ali. The rice porridge with faint fragrance caught Ali's eyes, and a little drool fell from his mouth. I want to eat. Pei quickly took the kanji from Lin Dalong, took the spoon, blew it a few times, tested it in the tiger's mouth with the spoon, and then gave Ali a spoon when it was not hot. The little girl ate everything except fish and worms and bean cakes, even white porridge, which was delicious to her. Her happy eyes narrowed. Oh, eat the little carp slowly. There's still something in the pot, it's all yours. But after a while, a large pot of porridge went into Ali's stomach. Everyone didn't expect that the little doll could eat so well. That pot of porridge was enough for the four little boys. Afraid that she might burst her stomach, Pei comforted her and said that there was still room for it at night. Ali just smashed his pink little mouth and stopped. She felt drowsy when she was full, but lay down and fell asleep in a few seconds. 
The weather this season is still a bit hot and humid, so Pei Shi covered her with a thin piece of clothing. Then he turned to the others and whispered, Let's all go out and discuss this matter. Hello kids, the author's new book has opened up a pit. Welcome to read, please give me more guidance. This article is still in its infancy, please take good care of it. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Please come to your doorstep. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2. Please come to your doorstep, today's incident was a bit sudden. Everyone gathered together, so let's discuss and come up with a solution. Whether to keep the little girl or send her to the village chief's house for him to arrange a way out. Lin Changlu took two puffs of dry smoke, his face darkened and weathered by the sun, full of solemnity. When he first saw Ollie, he was also very fond of her, but their current situation at home was somewhat unsuitable for adding people to import. The grain for next year has not yet arrived, and they will have to endure for several months to pass this year. They all have to tighten their belts. Dad, I think everyone really likes this girl. Why don't we wait a few days to see if any family members are looking for her? If no one is looking, how about we keep her? When Lin Dalong came back holding Ali, the four sons of the Lin family were not there. They followed the village chief to clean up the river. Upon hearing someone say that their family had picked up a little girl, they quickly ran back. Pei also nodded in agreement, old man, what the boss said is right. I really like carp. If no family comes to find her, let her stay. I finally hope to have a daughter, but at least save my food for her. Grandpa, leave your sister behind. Yes, Grandpa, we all saved half of our rations for her. Let's dig more wild vegetables on the mountain to support our sister. I'm also going to dig wild vegetables. Ten-year-old Lin Dalong, eight-year-old Lin Erlang, seven-year-old Lin Sanlang, and five-year-old Lin Silang all prayed eagerly to Lin Changlu, hoping to keep Ali. After a moment of silence, Lin Changlu looked at the others beside him and said, First wife, second wife, second wife, third wife, what do you think? Lin Durong's daughter in law, Zhang, has a somewhat weak personality and is hesitant to express any thoughts in such situations. She always says everything to her elders. Lin Erong and his wife Yen Shi are both straightforward people. Lin Lauer said directly, Dad, we also like carp and agree to stay. I will go to the county to find work and earn more money. Lin Sanrong also raised his hands in agreement. He used to envy seeing his classmates with younger sisters lying at the entrance of the school, sweetly calling out to his brother. Half a month later. The village chief and Lin's family searched around the area but did not hear of anyone losing their child, nor did anyone find them. The Lin family proposed to adopt Ali, and the village chief praised their decision. After all, if the Lin family did not adopt him, he would have to find a good family or send him to the county to report to the government. Nowadays, every household is facing difficulties, and our family is not enough to eat enough food. There is no spare food left to support a child who can eat so well. The county town is in chaos due to flooding, and there are many families who have been separated. The government also has no energy to manage them. From then on, Ali became a member of the Lin family. Lin Dalong and his companions were originally happy to finally have a younger sister, but little did they know that Yen suddenly realized she was pregnant, and Zhang's submissive nature was not favored by Pei. She simply raised Meng Li under her own name and became her daughter. Although her grandchildren are quite old and have only just turned 38 years old, she has now fulfilled her wish. A few little ones howled in agony, and their soft and cute sister suddenly became their sister. In law. Only Pei couldn't close her mouth with joy, and the wrinkles on her face turned into a flower with a smile. Lu Tsuehua, who was at odds with the Pei family in the village, seized the opportunity to chew on her tongue and say that the Lin family had a lot of food, and so many men in the family had spare money to support a loser. He deliberately said that all the food he gave to Ali was meat and white rice, Mrs. Pei's mother. In law, Mrs. Chen, 
was so angry when she heard gossip that she felt liver ache. She didn't show filial piety to the elderly and even gave extra food to an outsider. Under the instigation of her eldest daughter in law, she quickly came to her door. On this day, Ali happily chased after Silang outside the yard. Suddenly, Ali collided with someone. Bitch girl, you're going to die. Didn't you see us coming over? Can my old bone withstand your collision like this? Ali looked at the ferocious old woman in front of her and said with wide eyes, I'm not a cheap girl, you are. She has been following several small villages of the Lin family these days, perhaps because she is not an ordinary person, her learning ability is amazing, and her speech has become much more fluent. She knows this is not a good word. Chen Pazi became even more angry when she heard Ali's words, pointing at her and cursing loudly, what a white-eyed wolf. He even dares to scold his elders when he eats our Lin family's food. Pei sure can't teach you well. I'll teach you myself, old lady. If you can't relieve your anger after cursing, you have to come forward and grab Ali's arm. Ali's body was agile, and he turned around and slipped to the side, but was not caught. Although Sai Lang was a bit afraid of Mrs. Chen, he wanted to protect his aunt and quickly pulled Ali behind him. Tai Nai, please don't hit my aunt. She's still young. If you want to hit her, just hit me. Wow, in just a few days, this little slut has attracted you to protect her like this. It seems that the villagers are really right. You brought all the good things from your family to her, right? Chen Pazi's drooping triangular eyes were about to show sparks, and she raised her hand to hit Si Lang. Mother, what are you doing? Why are you getting angry with the two children? Pei Shi was working in the room when she heard the voice of Mrs. Chen coming from outside. She panicked and immediately ran out. Seeing this scene, he immediately pulled Shiro and Ali behind him to protect them. Pei Shi, your courage is getting stronger and stronger now. Even if you adopt this despicable girl, let her eat and drink spicy food all day. You don't know how to show filial piety to your elders. Pei Shi really wanted to roll her eyes. If she truly loved her men and children, it was impossible for them to be kicked out and not given a penny of their property. Mother, don't you know what's going on in our family? Every day when you drink porridge, you can see people's shadow. Don't listen to other people's nonsense all day. Besides, you know how Changlu and I were separated. Now I don't bother you about my family's affairs. Chen Pozi had a slight unnatural expression on her face, but she had thick skin and didn't feel like she had done anything wrong in the past. Humph, don't talk to me about that. You treat this cheap girl like a treasure now, and you won't be afraid to raise a white-eyed wolf in the future. I see, let's send her away quickly. Pei Shi became even more unhappy when she heard that the old lady was going to send Ali away. We absolutely can't send Ali away. She's already my daughter now, no one can touch her. The Lin family's current situation is entirely due to Pei's fiery personality. Ten years ago, Lin Chanlu injured one of his legs. His elder brother and his family were afraid of being dragged down, so he joined forces with Mrs. Chen to drive them out in the winter and divided them into two bags of aged grain for an unknown amount of time. At that time, Mr. Lin was still alive, and he felt sorry for Lin Changlu. He secretly gave him five tails of silver, so that the whole family could make a living. Now that Mrs. Chen wants to take care of her family's affairs, Pei will not get used to her. I won't talk too much to you, Shrew. Mrs. Chen turned her head and shouted loudly into the yard, Second, second, come out for me. Your mother is still staying indoors when she comes. It's really a waste of money raising you. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Will not send away. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Will not send away, don't shout anymore, Chan Lu is not at home. As a big family, we still have to live and don't work. I don't know if you will come today, after all, you rarely came to our place before. Mrs. Chen couldn't hear Pei's sarcasm. If you become angry with embarrassment, you will scratch her. 
Although Pei is fierce, Chen is still her mother. In law, she is not good at fighting back and can only step back. Ali, who was being held by Sai Lang, was a bit anxious. When she saw Pei being bullied, she pouted and looked at Mrs. Chen with an angry expression on her small face. Chen Pazi accidentally stepped on a stone and fell on her horse, lying on the ground, crying out in pain. Ali had just discovered that she had this ability, and the old turtle told her after she became conscious that Ali was no longer the same as before. With the addition of her spiritual energy, she will always strive to achieve her goals in the future. However, because she is still young, her energy will not be too strong. However, as she ages, her energy will become more apparent. When she first became a human, she didn't remember or understand what Grandpa Turtle meant. After staying here for a while, I vaguely understood what Grandpa Turtle had said to her at that time. For example, if she wanted to eat meat, a wild chicken would run to her and let her catch it. Sanlang and Shiro were bullied, and she would look at each other angrily, causing an accident. Perhaps due to her young age, such things don't happen every time in Turin. Chen Posey fell to the ground, and the person next to her who didn't mind the commotion said, this is your mother. In law from the Changlu family. Why don't you quickly find a doctor for her? It's time to blackmail you later. Everyone has seen it. I didn't touch her finger, but instead she wanted to hit me. I dare not help her, so I won't have to be charged at some point. I can't afford it. The villagers who were watching were also aware of the conflicts in their family, with some persuading Pei to be more generous and others supporting her. At this moment, Lin Changlu came back carrying a piece of wood. Chen Pezi saw their figures and lay on the ground, howling and singing, Second, you heartless one. I worked hard to give birth to you, but I didn't enjoy a day's worth of blessings. Now your wife is also bullying me. Lin Changlu's weathered face was filled with impatience. Mom, what are you doing? Do you still want to play the old trick again? You unfilial son, what do you mean by playing tricks? I really fell down. I don't care if it's true or false, but I believe Shoji won't bully you. Everyone should watch and hurry back. You. Chen Pezi saw that Lin Changlu didn't believe her, so she had to slowly get up on her own. Second, today I'll tell you, I don't admit that this lowly girl is a descendant of the Lin family. I advise you to send her away as soon as possible. Don't worry about it, I won't send the carp away. You are indeed like the Pei family. Since you insist on supporting this outsider, you should give me an extra five tails of silver every year. It's better to be filial to me than to have that spare money. The people present were all shocked by Chen Pozi's shamelessness. They were not given a penny when they were driven away, but now they still need to pay for their elderly care. Lin Changlu's face became even worse, and he said directly, We will still repay you for giving birth to me with the agreed upon amount of two tails of silver and three hundred pounds of grain per year. If you really don't think it's enough, then take my life. Chen Pezi didn't reap any benefits and sat down on the ground, patting her thighs while criticizing their unfilial family. Lin Changlu had already been heartbroken towards his mother. He threw the wood into the corner of the wall, bypassed Mrs. Chen, walked directly to Ali, picked her up, and led Pei and Sai Lang into the yard. With a bang, the courtyard door closed. Ali tilted his head and looked at him with watery big eyes that were a little nervous, asking, Dad, you wouldn't want carp, would you? Don't be afraid, carp. It's too late for parents to like you. How could they not want you? Peisher also said painfully on the side, Don't listen to others' nonsense, Li Li. You are my parents' treasure, and no one can send you away. I will also protect little carp, no one can bully you. Upon hearing these words, Ali's round little face immediately showed a sweet smile. The others at the lunch table were furious when they heard that Mrs. Chen wanted them to send Ali away. Lin Erong said while eating, Mom, don't let Sai Lang and Lily go out alone to play in the future. They are too young, and today they are still at their doorstep. 
If they were elsewhere, they might suffer losses. Lin Darong also nodded and said, in the afternoon, Dalong and his team should stop working in the field with us. Let's play with the carp at home. Anyway, they are also careless in their work in the field. The Lang Air Lang San Lang and others looked at each other with a smirk, showing a hopeful expression. Ali sat on a high stool, her legs swaying. With so many people protecting her, it felt so good. After dinner, the Lin family father and son, as well as the Pei and Zhang families, went to work in the fields. There is nothing left in the field washed away by the flood. They need to quickly tidy up the ground and plant autumn wheat, and also plant some vegetables and fruits in the vegetable garden, otherwise life will be even more difficult. Due to her pregnancy, Yan's family refused to let her work in the fields, so she stayed at home to sew, mend, and do household chores. In the afternoon, there were several big nephews accompanying Ali, and she happily followed them bouncing around. Erlang wove a grasshopper out of grass, hoping to surprise Ali, and placed it in her hand when she wasn't paying attention. Who knew that when Ali saw a grasshopper, as a natural reaction of the fish, he took a bite from an insect. This scared Dalong Erlang so much that he quickly pinched her soft cheeks and said, You're good, carp. This is not for food, spit it out quickly. Ali also felt that the taste was not right, staring at her puzzled big eyes and spat out the grasshopper in one gulp. Bad times, bad times. Sanlang and Shiro covered their mouths and smiled on the side. Auntie, this is for fun. Are you hungry? Why don't we go to the mountain and look for wild fruits to eat? As soon as the little girl heard the wild fruit, she thought of the sweet wild fruit they had picked before. Her eyes lit up and she immediately pulled the four young men out. Let's go pick the fruits. They ran into the house and told Yen that they wanted to go to the slope behind the house, but Yen definitely didn't agree, let alone bring Ali. Sister-in-law, I want to go to the mountain to pick fruits, said Ali, using his trump card and playing coquettishly with Yan's pants Yan Shur's heart melted when she saw her soft and cute appearance. She sighed in her heart, blaming their family for being too poor and not having much to eat. Picking up Ali and kissing her cheek, he said, Oh my dear, how could I refuse you? Then he turned to Sajiro and said, You must take good care of Ali. If there's any problem, I won't agree to you in the future. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Lucky Carp You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Lucky Carp The four young men cheered as Yen Shur agreed. Auntie, rest assured that we will definitely take good care of your little aunt. Do you have to come back and call me if there's anything? De Lang nodded and took Ali from her hand, carrying him on his back before leaving. Yen Shi went out to watch them go to the back slope before turning back to the house to work on his own business. Ali and the others arrived on the hillside and saw many children there as well. Now every household in the village is short of food and food, and children are running out to dig wild vegetables to find food. Lin Dalong, has this little girl really become your little aunt? Li Dajuang and two or three friends approached them with curious eyes. Lin Dalong gave him a white glance and said, Of course, you must not bully my aunt in the future, otherwise I won't be able to spare you. Where can we go? We're brothers, your aunt is our aunt, let alone this little aunt looks so beautiful. That's right, brother Dalong. Your aunt is so beautiful, unlike my sister who is as dark as a carbon head. Upon hearing their praise of Ah Li's good looks, Si Lang unconsciously straightened his chest. A few little girls are digging wild vegetables above the hillside. What's so remarkable about being good dot looking? It's not biological. I don't know how the Lin family treats the baby they picked up like a treasure. There are no girls in the Lin family. I heard that Mrs. Lin is pregnant again. If she gives birth to a baby girl, she will definitely be driven away. A four or five year old skinny and dark little girl followed behind two eight or nine year old girls, listening to them talk, occasionally looking at Ali led by Lin Dalong. My eyes were filled with envy. 
Ali couldn't help but shake his hand as he saw that Dalong had been chatting with others. Dalong immediately understood her meaning and said to Li Dujuang, then carried Ali on his back and led Erlang, Sanlang, and Silang towards the other side of the mountain slope. Not long after walking, I saw clusters of red wild fruits. It's the kind they often pick, maybe there are too many thorns in the front that haven't been removed by people. Erlang endured the pain of being pricked and crawled through the thorns, picking all the fruits. Happily holding up the corner of his clothes, he picked up a fruit and wiped it on his arm, handing it to Ali. Try the carp, this wild fruit is so sweet. Ali watched as Erlang's hands were pricked with many red marks, faintly oozing with bloodstains. The carp is not eating now, let's go home and eat together. After speaking, he patted his feet to blow air on his injured hand. This is what she learned from Peshur, shouting and saying, Mom said, it doesn't hurt anymore. Erlang is used to his usual skin, and this small injury is nothing at all. He never cared about it. Ali's actions made him feel warm in his heart, and he swore in his heart that he must be better to his aunt in the future. They continued to move forward, and on the way, they saw wild vegetables and dug up a lot together. Ali also wanted to dig together, but just a few steps away, he accidentally got mixed up. Her small body fell uncontrollably to the ground, and she grabbed it randomly. When the four brothers came forward to help her up and pat the soil on her body, they found that she was holding something in her hand. Auntie, what are you holding in your hand? Sanlang asked first. Ali shook his head, and his two furry braids swayed left and right along with him. I don't even know. The Lang had never seen this thing before, so he had to ask Er Lang to wrap it in clothes and bring it back to the adults to see if it was useful. Just as they were about to go back, two rabbits crawled out of a hole one after the other. Erlang, Sanlang, and Silang rushed forward to chase after him, but little did they know that the rabbit had run forward for a while when suddenly a sudden break turned and ran towards Ali's direction. Dalong was afraid that the rabbit would hit Ali, and was about to pick her up when a dramatic scene appeared. The two rabbits collided directly with a big tree next to Ali. Fainted to the ground. Ali and Sajiro were both stunned when they saw this scene. For Lang still remember that it seemed like a wild chicken flew to their little ant like this and fell to the ground. They looked at each other and Erlang said, Our little ant is not a fairy, is she? The other three men nodded and said in unison, Very likely. Ali looked at the rabbit with an excited expression and drooled, Isn't the rabbit also very good? Silang couldn't help but swallow and spit, It's delicious, as long as it's meat. Last time, Due to a lack of money at home, the wild chicken left behind a stewed soup. After everyone had a tooth sacrifice, the other two were sold in the county to exchange for money to support their families. I have gained a lot today. When it's getting late, four young men take Ollie home. There were other children on the road who wanted to see what they found. Erlang cleverly showed them the wild vegetables and quickly went home. After finishing dinner, Yen Shi came out and looked several times towards the hillside, but didn't see any children coming back. He couldn't help but feel a bit worried. Lin Changlu and Pei's team have finished their work and returned. Before entering the courtyard, Lin Sanrong shouted inside, Lily, we're back. Come out and welcome your third brother. A few days ago, when they came back from work, when they heard the sound, Ollie would run out and sweetly call out to them one by one. There was no movement in the courtyard today, and Lin Sanrong was somewhat puzzled. Dad, Mom, you're back. A few kids have gone to play on the back slope but haven't come back yet. Did the carp also go? Pei handed the hoe in her hand to Yen and squatted by the well, washing her hands and asking. They wanted to go pick fruits to eat, but I thought I would let them go soon. These wild kids, don't let anything happen to the carp. Forget it, I'll go find it. Mom, I'll go with you. Lin Sanrong quickly washed his hands and was about to go out with Pei Shi. At this moment, a shout came from outside, Mom, we're back. A few boys rushed towards the yard to see who was running faster. 
Ali laughed heartily as he was jolted on De Lang's back. Seeing them return, the hearts of the adults in the room finally relaxed. Grandpa, Milk, you're back. We've had a big harvest today, we caught. Before San Lang could finish speaking, Erlang covered his mouth. Let's talk inside. Originally, Lu Tsuehua was sneaking around outside the wooden fence. Pei picked up the rotten vegetable leaves by the well and threw them out. It happened to fall on Lu Tsuehua's head, infuriating her half to death, just as she was about to go berserk and have a fight with Pei Shi. The whole family entered the house as if they hadn't seen her. As soon as they entered, Erlang and Sanlang eagerly opened and displayed their spoils of war today. Everyone was really surprised when they saw the rabbit, after all, this thing is not easy to catch. We are discussing whether to sell the rabbit or eat it ourselves. Lin Chanlu was attracted by something. He picked it up and carefully looked at it for a while before confirming that it was really what he was thinking. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Getting Rich You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 6 Making New Friends You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Making New Friends Previously, the Lin family was poor and could only afford Lin Sanrong alone. Now that the family has money, Lin Changlu and Pei plan to send the four brothers to study, not expecting them to become high dot ranking officials. At least they can read and not be deceived. On that day, Ali and Si Lang ran to the village entrance to play. There is a large open space at the village entrance, flat and open, with a large banyan tree for shade, and some stone tables and chairs. Next to the open space is a medium dot sized grocery store owned by the Chin family. This is the gathering place for gossip in Taohua village and also a great place for children to play. However, at this time, the adults in the village don't have time to chat here, only some young dolls are playing here. Ali is here for the first time today and feels very interesting. When they arrived, seven or eight boys were playing the game of eagle catching chicks, and four or five girls were playing house by the side. Lin Daolong, what are you doing here? One of the boys, who was about the same age as Lin Daolong, looked at them with an arrogant expression. Lin Erbao, this is not your home, why can't we come? We came first, so I won't let you play here. What's wrong? We have to play here. I won't let this loser come here to play. Last time, Tainai fell and lay in bed for several days. My grandma said she was a little slut, and in the future, she will be a ride for a thousand people. You can scold me, but you're not allowed to scold my aunt. Lin Dalong gritted his teeth in anger and immediately got into a fight with Lin Erbao. The three Langs were also very angry and all went up to besiege Lin Erbao. When Ali heard the words, losing money, again, she didn't like it very much and took a bite from Lin Erbao's hand. The children who were playing with Lin Erbao next to them didn't dare to go up and help. Everyone knew that Lin Dalong and his four brothers were united and started fighting to scare people. Now they also had a little baby, which didn't seem like good behavior. Moreover, they don't like Lin Erbao to play, he talks a lot and stinks. In no time, Lin Erbao was pinned down below, crying and begging for mercy. So many of you guys hit me. I'm going back to sue me for milk, wow. Lin Erbao is the grandson of Lin Changlu's elder brother's family. Due to the separation of the family in the past, the relationship between the two families was not good, and even the younger generation below had a very poor relationship. When they met, they would pinch each other. I'm not afraid of you accusing me. Who made you scold my aunt? Next time, if I hear you scold me like this again, I'll hit you again and again. After De Lang finished speaking, he asked Er Lang and the others to let go of Lin Er Bao. Lin Er Bao sat up, feeling wet under his nose. When he touched it with his hand, he found a bright red color. With a whoosh, he didn't care about his messy hair and ran home in a flash. De Lang asked the other friends, do you want to play with us? Of course, let's play. 
Let's keep catching chicks with eagles. We don't want to play with Lin or Bao anymore. He's always playing tricks and scolding us. It's just that it's better if he leaves. Ali doesn't want to play with eagles catching chicks, she is more interested in the girl next to her playing with mud. She squatted next to them watching them play. One of them was the little girl who had been picking wild fruits on the mountain a while ago, and Ali was envious of the little girl who was digging wild vegetables. She smiled timidly and said, Do you want to play with us? Okay. Li Xiaodi, you are really cheap. Do you need to please her like this? We won't play with you like this, said a little girl around five or six with a disdainful expression. Why don't you let her play with us? Humph, my mother said she picked it up. It's unknown who this kind of person is, so she told me not to play with her. But. I want to play with her. Then you can play with her. If you want to be with us again in the future, we don't want you anymore, humph. After the girl finished speaking, she took the other two girls to a different place to play. Little sister, if they don't play with you, I'll play with you, said Ali happily, holding a ball of mud in her hand Li Xiaodi nodded and looked at Qing Jiao Jiao and the others who were walking away. She knew in her heart that they had never really treated her as friends, and every time they came out to play, they would cheer on her. Every time she meets Ali, her gaze is pure and beautiful, without looking down on her, making her want to get closer. In no time, the two little guys became familiar with each other, and Li Xiaodi was two years older than Ali. Ali's heartwarming gesture, one by one, warmed the little girl's heart. Li Xiaodi was also Ali's first good friend besides the Lin family in diplomacy. The friendship between the two children also slowly sprouted from this moment. They played house together and had a great time together. Unfortunately, not long after, a skinny woman with a big belly walked over on the distant path, her face full of anger, and she was holding a twig the size of a little thumb in her hand. Jaudi, this dead girl, hasn't rolled back yet. There's no work left at home, right? She's just trying to be lazy, it's like going to the house and exposing tiles without fighting for a day. Li Xiaodi stood up at a loss when she saw her mother coming. Didn't her mother go to the ground? Why did you come back so soon? Mom. I didn't slack off. I washed the dishes, swept the floor, and fed the pigs before coming out. Damn it, what are you doing with your eyes growing up? I won't find any more work to do. I only know how to eat dry food for a day. What's the use of supporting you? I'll lose money. After cursing, he couldn't help but pick up Li Xiaodi's neck with his left hand, and the branch in his right hand was about to be knocked down. You can't hit Zhao Di sister. Dot. Ali's angry little face bulged, and her eyes widened as she looked at the woman. Ha, even a little kid who's not as tall as three cows droppings dares to meddle in my family's affairs. Get out of here and don't wait for me to beat you together. Aunt Li, dare you touch my little aunt and give it a try. Huan looked up and saw that it was the four sons of the Lin family. He understood in his heart that this little head was the precious treasure that Pei had picked up. Her mother in dot law came back a while ago with a head of rotten vegetable leaves and cursed at the Lin family, and she knew she must have been cleaned up by the Pei family again. So I still feel a bit hesitant to provoke her, afraid that Pei Shi will try her best. Lin Dalong, I'm just saying it out of my mouth. Don't go back and talk nonsense to your mistress. Your family is really good at it. Why are you so concerned about a girl you picked up? Because my aunt and we are a family now, my mother said that of course, our family should love each other. It's not like Aunt Lu being willing to hit her own daughter. Lin Erlang pulled Ali to his side and said to Huang with a smile. Huang glared at Lin Erlang with an unhappy expression, threw the branch in his hand onto the ground, and pulled Li Xiaodi home. As he walked, he cursed, don't play with these kids in the future, a group of uneducated people. Ali looked at her distant figure with some concern and said, will sister Xiaodi be beaten? End of this chapter Chapter 7 Qin's Fault Finding 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Qin's Fault Finding Don't worry, Li Li, Zhao Di will protect herself, but she may go hungry at night. When Ali heard that Li Zhao Di would be hungry, she couldn't help but touch her little belly. It's so uncomfortable to be hungry. They didn't play for a while before they went home. A few children had just walked outside the yard when they heard a woman loudly cursing in their yard. A group of onlookers surrounded the wooden fence. Hey, you heartless bastard. You picked up a cheap girl and lost your filial piety. Even if you bully your mother, let them bully my grandson. Today, I must tear up that cheap girl. Chin sure, don't spit blood here. It was my mother who came here to find fault and fall. What do we mean by bullying her? Everyone is watching. They don't even want to splash dirty water on us, and your second treasure was injured. Who knows what's going on? My second treasure personally said that he was beaten by those young boys from your family, don't try to play tricks. At this moment, the village chief saw that Lin Daolong and the others had returned and shouted to the noisy sister dot in dot law in the yard, stop arguing. Daolong and the others have returned, and if you ask them clearly, you will know. Don't hurt the harmony of the family. De Lang knew that hitting Lin Erbao today might cause trouble, so he held Ali's hand and comforted her not to be afraid. A few children entered the yard, and Qin ran towards De Lang and Ali like a madman. Dalong quickly took Ali's hand and dodged to the side. Qin collided straight into the courtyard door frame. She covered her forehead in pain and grinned, while those watching the excitement couldn't help but burst into laughter. Upon seeing this, Pei quickly pulled the four langs and Ali over to let them enter the house. Qin shouted loudly, Don't leave, explain to me clearly. You are bullying people too much. Not only are people despicable, but even the door is so despicable. If you don't give me an explanation today, I won't leave. Pei Shi rolled her eyes and then turned to De Lang, asking, Did you really hit Er Bao today? De Lang clenched his fist and looked at Lin Er Bao standing beside him. That's right, I beat him up. Upon hearing this, Qin walked over and pointed at the young man, ignoring the big bag on his head, and asked Pei, he admitted it himself. Why hit him? Pei knew that Daolong was not someone who would bully other people's children for no reason. Because Lin Erbao scolded his aunt. You Lin Daolong, how did your parents teach you to hit your own brother for such a lowly girl? Shut up, don't be such a cheap girl again, otherwise I can't help but hit my sister. In. Law. Lily is my daughter, and it's only right for the young man to protect her. Although hitting someone is a bit wrong, who makes your second treasure mouth oh? If you scold me a few times, then you'll be killing me. You're bullying people too much, it's unreasonable. If you don't compensate me five tails of silver today, I won't leave. The village chief walked over and looked at the two of them with a headache, saying, from the Changue and Changlu families, it's normal for children to fight and make noise. Five tails of silver is definitely impossible. It's okay to give Erbao at least twenty copper coins to see the doctor. No way. Upon hearing only twenty copper coins, Qin immediately jumped up. Without five tails of silver, this matter won't be over. Mother, what is a thousand-person riding thing? Ali's watery big eyes looked at Pei Shi in confusion and asked. Because of her questioning, the whole room fell silent. Peg immediately covered her small mouth and said, Ali, you can't say this to anyone. It's a foul language. But that's how Lin Erbao scolded me, said Ali, gently pulling off Pei's two fingers and continuing, what? Did he really curse at you like that? Upon hearing these words, Pei Shi became angry and immediately looked at the Lang. Lin Erbao said it was her milk who taught her this, De Lang nodded angrily the onlookers around now all cast disdainful glances at Qin Shi, after all, no one taught the younger generation to curse girls like this. It's simply too malicious. Qin's mother fought against you. You scolded my daughter. Pei grabbed Qin's hair and scratched her face when she went up. The two quickly got into a ball. 
Yen Shi saw that her mother Dotin Dot Law had already gone up and was also preparing to go up and kill Qin Shi. The village chief quickly stopped her. From the Erong family, don't make any fuss. Ali was also stopped by Daolong Erlang on the side, otherwise she would have gone up and bit someone again. The scene was chaotic. The village chief quickly called on the woman next to him who was watching the excitement to pull them apart. What do you look like? Stop it now. After the two were pulled apart, Pei's hair was pulled off by a small pinch, and Qin's face was in a miserable state. Not only was her bald head pulled off, but her hair was also covered in bloodstains. Seeing them both doing this, they couldn't help complaining to the people beside them, Qin's family is not as good as it was in those days, and Pei's family is growing up this time. Qin's words are too malicious, and the little girl didn't offend her. If my daughter is scolded like this, I will also fight her hard. Pei Shi breathed a sigh of relief and said to Qin Shi, our two families broke up ten years ago. It's absolutely impossible for you to bully us like you did before. I tell you, I want to hear you scold my carp again. I'll tear up your mouth and want silver. Damn it, your master. Get out of here quickly. My family will never welcome you. After speaking, take a big broom and shout at Qin Shi. Scared, Qin Shi pulled Lin Erbao, who was crying, and ran away. After they left, the onlookers also left one after another. The village chief sighed and said to Pei, from the Changlu family, please calm down. The Changgui family doesn't have a good way of speaking. Don't have the same opinion as her. I'll leave first. When Changlu comes back, let him come to my house and sit down when he has time. Pei straightened her messy hair and said, Okay, could you please come this way, village chief? I'll make you laugh. Ali also understood that she seemed to have said the wrong thing, tears streaming down her face. Li Li, why are you crying? Mom, it's okay. Don't cry. Pei saw off the village chief and came back, holding Ali and whispering to him. Building a school in the village requires a large number of trees. A few male members of the Lin family and the villagers went to the mountains to chop down trees, and only when they returned did they know about this. Lin Changlu was so angry that he threw away his dry tobacco before he even took a few puffs and was about to leave. Pei knew that he was going to argue with her and the carp. He quickly grabbed him and said, as the head of the family, I didn't suffer any losses today. My sister Dutton Dot Law has been scratched all over her face by me, and she probably won't dare to come and cause trouble for a long time. It doesn't matter how much we argue. There's no need for you to argue with your elder brother when you go, after all, your mother is there, and it won't look good when it starts. Lin Chanlu knew that his wife was considering him, so he withdrew his steps. Pei asked Delang to go to the grocery store and cut two pounds of meat to add to everyone's meal. Although she lost a lot of hair, her mood was very good. At the dinner table in the evening, for young men were specially praised for maintaining Ali today, and each of them was given a lot of meat. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Sending Warmth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Sending Warmth After Eating, It Was Not Completely Dark Yet, and What Came to Ali's Mind She ran to the kitchen to take a look and found that there was still a bowl of brown rice left. So he ran up to Pei's face, kicking and kicking. Mom, can I have the leftover rice? Is it not enough to have leftover food for carp? Ali shook her head and said, Sister Zhaudi doesn't have any food to eat at night, so her stomach will be hungry. Pei was somewhat surprised. She didn't know when Ali became so familiar with the Li family's Zhaudi girl. After all, she is not compatible with Lu Tsuehua, and the children of both families rarely play together. So she called the young man over and asked what had happened. Lin Dalong told Pei what happened during the day today. Pei sighed and said, Huang is just as bad as her mother. In. Law. Her daughter doesn't care at all, and the girl who recruited her is also pitiful. With such a father and mother, go and have your third uncle accompany Li Li to take a look. 
She carefully squeezed the leftovers into rice and vegetable roll, which also contained some leftovers. It's not easy for them to have a meal of meat at home. Usually, even the leftovers from the first meal are kept until the next one. She cooked a lot tonight, otherwise there might not be any leftover food. Ali took a rice and vegetable roll in one hand and happily walked with Lin Sanrong to the Li's yard. Why is Li Li so good to Zhao Di? Lin Sanrong followed behind her and asked with a smile. Because of Sister Zhao Di, my first friend. Aren't we your friends then? Ali stopped and turned to look at Lin Sanrong with a pair of bright big eyes. No, third brother, you are my favorite relatives. Lin Sanrong squatted down and gently pinched Ali's soft cheeks. Where did you learn, little girl? You speak so well. Ali smiled with curved eyebrows and eyes, I heard what my mother said, he he, sure enough, the little girl was still cute. He was thinking that in the future, if he married his wife, he would have a daughter as cute as Ali. The Li family is not far from the Lin family, and Lin Sanrong quickly arrived holding Ali. Their purpose is to see if Li Zhaodi is outside, and if not, they will go home. Lin Sanrong and Ali walked around the fence and actually found Li Zhaodi sitting in front of the haystack, sobbing. She was already a bit dark and the sky was a bit dim. If it weren't for hearing her crying, Lin Sanrong and Ali probably wouldn't have noticed her. The thin and small person was curled up in the haystack, with their shoes and thumbs exposed, making the scene look pitiful. Ali called out, Sister Zhaodi, with a milky voice. Li Zhaodi only then realized that someone had arrived. She immediately looked up and saw that it was Ali. Why did you come, Carp? Sister Zhaodi, do you have no food at night? We brought you rice and vegetable roll, so you don't have to go hungry. Upon hearing these words, Li Zhaodi's young heart, which had been tormented, suddenly burst into defense, tears streaming down her face. Sister Zhaodi doesn't cry. Ali then put two rice and vegetable roll into Li Zhaodi's hands. Lin Sanrong didn't feel good watching from the side. Don't feel uncomfortable, hurry up and eat the food. When your mother finds out, you may not be able to eat it again. It's getting dark, so we'll go back first. Upon hearing this, Li Zhaodi quickly wiped her tears with her sleeve and said, Thank you, to Ali and Lin Sanrong. Watching them leaving behind, they ate rice and vegetable roll with big mouthfuls. When they still had the taste of meat in them, their eyes were moist again. Today, she was scolded by her mother for picking up a basket of firewood on the mountain before going home. When she returned, her family was eating and no one called her to eat. When she went to fetch a bowl of rice herself, she was pushed down by her mother and scolded at her. What to eat? Your younger brother hasn't eaten enough in my stomach yet. Get out of here quickly. You're not allowed to eat tonight, you can't starve to death. Her father Li Dainiu and her nurse Lu Tsuehua gave her a disdainful glance and then went to eat on their own. Li Zhaodi got up without crying or making a fuss and walked to the grass outside the yard. In such a family environment, she had long been sensible. Because such things happen almost every few days, just because she is not a boy. Ali's actions warmed her heart, and she smiled while eating, shedding tears. The next day, Lin Darong and his wife took Daolong and Silang to their grandmother's house. A while ago, they sent a message from someone outside their home asking them to go, which freed up time to visit their relatives. They just left. Li Dajuang and a few children from the village stood outside the Lin family yard and shouted to Erlang Sanlang in the yard. Erlang Sanlang, today we're going to catch fish by the river. Are you going? Erlang and Sanlang also want to play by the river. Wait a minute, I'll tell my mother. Then he entered the room. At this moment, Yen Shi was combing Ali's hair and braiding her hair. Mom, can I go catch fish with San Lang? Yen Shi looked up at him and said, The riverbank is too dangerous. Besides, you're leaving. Who are the carp playing with? It's better not to go, let Dajuang and the others come into the courtyard to play. 
I also want to go catch fish, sister. In. Law. The fish is delicious. Upon hearing Ah Li's words, Yen deftly scraped her little nose with her fingers. If you want to go, let's all go. I'll also go and see with you. Erlang was disorganized in the wind on the side. Mother, you are really my own mother. Stinky kid, don't be poor anymore. Go get the wooden bucket and let's go. We'll come back early to cook for your master's milk and send it to the field. Lin Erlang happily greeted Sanlang to fetch the wooden bucket. Yen locked the door and led Ali's little hand and a group of children towards the river. The weather in September feels a bit hot when the sun is shining brightly. Yen Shi was watching by the river to see if there were any edible wild vegetables. Erlang Sanlang took off his shoes and used a branch to fork a fish in the shallow water. Ali also took off his shoes and sat on a stone, swaying his two meaty feet in the water. She really likes this place, also loves water, and even more wants to dive into the river and swim around. But Yen Shi reminded her repeatedly not to go into the water. She is a good child and needs to be obedient. I have to play with water with my feet to get the hang of it. After a while, Li Dajuang and his companions had already caught half a bucket of fish. Erlang and Sanlang have been forking for a long time but haven't caught a single fish, and they are all feeling a bit discouraged. It seems that I won't be able to eat today's fish. Li Dajuang saw that they hadn't caught a single fish and planned to give them two, but was refused by Erlang. He finally caught it, how could he be too embarrassed to ask for it? The two men hung their heads and prepared to go find Ali to go home. When they walked up to Ali with an empty wooden bucket, the scene in front of them once again stunned them. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Meddling in One's Own Business You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Meddling in One's Own Business I saw a dense swarm of fish swimming around under Ali's feet. Erlang Sanlang was afraid of scaring the fish away and did not shout out loud. Two people go up and catch fish and fish into the wooden bucket. Ali giggled happily on the side. It didn't stop until the barrel couldn't fit. Coincidentally, Yen Shi also walked over with a basket full of wild vegetables. How's it going? Did you catch any fish? We should go home and cook. Mom, come and take a look. Yen glanced into the barrel and was startled, I've caught so many. It's not just because my aunt was there that I caught him. We didn't catch a single one with Da Zhuang over there, Erlang whispered to his mother. Then let's keep quiet and go back. Sanlang ran to greet Li Da Zhuang and they quickly went home. While Yen was cooking, Ali squatted beside the wooden barrel and poked the fish inside, thinking about how to eat it. Previously, when she ate small fish in the wishing pool, she would just swallow it directly. How should she swallow such a big fish? At this moment, Yen Shi walked over and grabbed two fish from the bucket, placed them by the well, and slapped them with a knife twice before becoming motionless. Then, he skillfully cleaned the scales and internal organs of the fish. This operation left Ali stunned. Then she followed behind Yan's buttocks, watching her fry the fish in lard on both sides until golden brown, then boil it with water, ginger slices, and salt. In no time, the thick white and fragrant fish soup came out of the pot. So fish can still be eaten like this. Yen Shi knew that Ah Li was greedy, so she quickly filled her with a bowl of fish and soup and placed it on the table. Carp, come and taste the fish soup made by my sister. In. Law. Is it fragrant? Ali shook his head and said, the fish soup is fragrant. I need to go and bring food to my parents, otherwise they will be hungry. Oh, why are you so sensible? As expected, the little cotton jacket is thoughtful. I also have a stir-fried vegetable. You can finish it first before going. Upon hearing these words, Ali took Erlang Sanlang and finished drinking fish soup together, then went to deliver food to Lin Changlu and the others. Before they arrived, the three children shouted at Lin Changlu and Pei Shi who were working in the field. Dad, Mom, have dinner. Grandpa, milk, 
Let's eat now. Lin Chanlu and Pei Xiu looked up when they heard the voice, and their smiles also increased a bit. You guys slow down, don't fall. After shouting, Pei turned back to Lin Erong and Lin Sanrong, who was working, and said, Stop and rest quickly. The carp and the others have brought food. A few people just wiped their sweat and sat under the shade of trees by the field. Pei stepped forward to pick up a few little guys and didn't cross a hurdle and throw their lunch away. Ah! There's still fish soup to drink today. Lin Erong opened a large bamboo bucket and felt happy. Erlang told a few people about the fresh news of catching fish today. Thank you, our little carp. Let's have such delicious fish soup. Ali seemed to understand this sentence and said with a smile, third brother likes it, let's go catch it later. Okay, but you're not allowed to know alone, are you? Ali shook his two small braids on his head and nodded obediently. Lin Changlu was not good at expressing emotions, so he didn't speak much. Sitting on the side, he couldn't help but look at the smile on Ali's face. When they eat happily. A strange voice came from behind. Oh. What's this family eating? Let my old lady try it too. A woman in her sixties quickly rushed up to them, only to find a pile of empty bamboo tubes left. You're eating too fast here, there's really no residue left. Aunt Gung, it's good to have some food these days. There's no leftover left. Mrs. Gung is a famous owner in the village who likes to take advantage of things and never goes home empty-handed when visiting other households. And he also likes to rely on his old age to sell and train people. Shoji, I say you're really confused. You're old and ignorant, and your family's life is not easy. You even pick up someone else's child to raise, and you're not afraid they'll take it back for free. Pei's face was a bit displeased as he was about to retaliate. Lin Erong said first, Granny Gung, last time I went to the county town, I heard that an old lady lived to 105 years old. Do you want to know why? Upon hearing these words, Mrs. Gung became interested and rushed over to ask, Second kid, why don't you tell her-in-law? That old lady said she never cares about others' affairs. Upon hearing these words, Mrs. Gung could still hear the tone beyond his words, and her old face immediately turned red. Chang Lu. You two kids have been bad at learning, they will all curse around the bush. Lin Chang Lu took a few puffs of dry tobacco and said, I think what the second person said makes quite sense. Aunt Gung, we need to work now. You should also go and get busy. Mrs. Gung looked at their family's unwillingness to talk to her, and her face was a bit unfriendly. She glanced at Ah Li and muttered, Kindness is like a donkey's liver and lungs, when you cry. After speaking, he walked unsteadily with his hands behind his back. Ali sat next to Pei and grabbed her clothes, saying, It's so scary. The carp is not afraid. With parents and brothers around, no one dares to bully you. Lin Changlu quickly said, Third, don't do it this afternoon. Take the carp and their family home. Lin Sanrong nodded, tidied up his things, and then went back, Lin Sanrong didn't go to the field this afternoon. He was at home reading and practicing calligraphy. The village school was built in just over a month, and he will also go to consolidate and consolidate it. He can take the children's and village exams next year. Their children from poor families do not have the saying that they do not need to work as a scholar, so he has always been working while studying. When he has nothing to do, he also teaches the four boys at home some simple words. Ali is very interested in studying and writing. Lin Sanrong is holding a book to read, and she obediently sits on the side, shaking her head and brain with her, looking extremely cute. Seeing how much she liked it, Lin Sanrong took out his collection of calligraphy books that were about to be turned over and taught her word by word. Ali is also studying very seriously, and her learning progress is also very fast. She can basically do it once. Lin Sanrong pinched her small face and said, You're too smart, Li Li. Unfortunately, Sangu doesn't have the money to buy paper for you to practice calligraphy. 
When I go and copy books to earn more money, I'll buy it for you. Even if I make money, I'll buy it for my third brother, said Ollie with a pair of big eyes, looking at him sincerely. Not long after, Ollie kept nodding while reciting his little head, and his speech was blurry. Lin Sanrong picked her up and saw that the little one's eyes couldn't even open, so he quickly picked her up and put her to bed to sleep. She slept until it was almost dark before getting up. Just when she woke up, Lin Darong returned with Dalong Shiro. However, none of them had a good expression and didn't speak much when they returned. Pei asked curiously, didn't you say you stayed overnight before coming back? Why did you come back today? End of this chapter Chapter 10 Selling Live Fish You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Selling Live Fish, Milk, I Won't Go to My Grandmother's House Anymore I Won't Go Either Grandma is too scary. Pei Shi sure heard Dalang Silang's words and asked Lin Darong in confusion, what's wrong with this? Lin Darong sat down on the stool with a hint of helplessness and said, my mother in law asked us to go this time so that we could pay for her son's marriage. When I said I didn't have money, they cursed at me. When I got angry, they brought Dalong and the others back. Yuchuan didn't come back with you guys. Her mother said a few harsh words and left her behind. If she doesn't come back, she won't come back. I see she only has her own family in her heart. My mother doesn't want to stay either, my grandmother won't let me go. Pei probably knew what was going on. When the matchmaker introduced Lin Darong, she said that Zhang Yujuan had a good personality and didn't say much. They also fell in love, only to find out after getting married that she had a weak personality and that her family would come to her for anything. The Lin family thought they were all relatives, so they didn't care too much. They also invested a lot of money in it. Now that my son is getting married, it's a bit unreasonable to ask my daughter to use the money to marry her. Boss Yujuan has a soft temper. If you have something to say, please go pick her up in a few days. No need to answer, if she had our home, she would have come back on her own. Sigh. Pei sighed and stopped persuading, leading Ali to get a bowl to eat. On the dining table. Dad, Mom, there's still more than half of the fish caught today. I think it's still lively and lively. Why don't we go to the county early tomorrow morning and sell it? Yen Shi noticed that everyone's atmosphere was somewhat solemn, so she found a topic to ease it up. Okay, we'll need more silver money in the future, so saving a little is just a small amount. Lin Changlu turned to Lin Erong and said, Tomorrow, second brother, you can go to the county to sell fish. The boss will bring two fish to pick up your daughter. In law, no matter what, we can't ignore her. Ali sipped kanji, listened to the adults, and suddenly thought of something. Dad, I'll go with my second brother. The expression on Lin Changlu's face immediately softened. Does Li Li want to go to the county with your second brother? Ali nodded vigorously with chopsticks. But there are flower shoots in the county that specialize in catching children. Aren't you afraid? Not afraid, there's a second brother who beats bad people. Then you have to wake up very early tomorrow and can't sleep in. Okay, I wake up early. Ali's cute words instantly made everyone feel relaxed. All right then. If Li Li wants to go, go. The Lang Air Lang also goes with her. Look at your little aunt, don't let her get lost. Upon hearing this, Erlang Sanlang's face lit up with joy as he buried himself in a bowl to eat. Sanlang and Shiro looked envious beside them. There are not many opportunities for children in the village to go to the county, after all, taking a cart costs one cent for both adults and children. The next day, just as it was dawn, Lin Erong got up. He first went to check the fish in the bucket and found that none of them had died. If I had flipped my belly before, it seems to be related to their little Ollie. After packing up, he thought Ollie couldn't get up and was about to carry a bucket and set off on his own when a sound came from the room. Turning his head, he saw Ollie walking out under the left and right guardianship of Dalong Erlang. 
Pei also followed behind and instructed, come back as soon as you finish selling things, and be sure to keep an eye on Ali. Then hand a handkerchief bag to Lin Erong. Don't be reluctant to spend all that money by car. When you go to the county, buy a few steamed buns for you to eat. Lin Erong nodded with a smile on his face and said, All right, Mom, don't worry. I will take care of these little ones. It's still early, you can go sleep for a while. Ali happily waved his hand to Pei Shur and pulled Dalong Erlang away, bouncing and jumping. Pei watched them walk out until their figures were covered by the house before turning around and entering. Ali and the others arrived at the village entrance. At this moment, Two people were already sitting on the ox cart, one was Huang, the mother of Li Xiaodi, and the other was Mrs. Gung. Lin Erong ignored them and gave four one to the owner of the ox cart, Old Lu Tu, before carrying Ao Li onto the cart. It seems that the Lin family is already wealthy. Even such a young child can take a cart to the county with them. Who said it's not right? A girl picked up can be a treasure. Huang and Mrs. Gung sat on the side muttering softly. Ali still remembers that the two people in front of her had both hurt her. Knowing that they were not good people, he tilted his head to the side and curiously looked at the mountains and rivers on the roadside. Quickly, two or three more people arrived, and Old Lu headed off with a cart. The rural path is not easy to walk, and the water in the bucket is shaking out. Oh, Lin's second son, what's in your bucket? The water has already shaken out, so don't get our pants wet. I'll have to trouble you then. Lin Erong lifted the bucket to the side and said, Sisterly, don't worry, I won't touch your precious body. Humph, you're right. My body is so precious. The old doctor said I'm pregnant with a son. Is your son different? Why don't you like to invite Sister D? What Ali said made Huang feel a bit uncomfortable. What do you know, little girl? Where is a good son for a girl? Girls are all losers, sooner or later they will belong to someone else's family. It is well known in the village that she is not good to Li Xiaodi, so she doesn't feel any embarrassment. Ali frowned innocently and said, but you are also a girl. As soon as these words were spoken, the people in the car couldn't help but burst out laughing. They didn't expect Huang to be told by a three-dot-year-dot-old girl. Huang was so angry that he took a fierce look at Ali. Ali originally wanted to say that she was also a girl in her belly, but she glared at her and didn't say anything. Everyone didn't speak much along the way. When they arrived at the county town, it was already daylight. At this time, there was a continuous stream of people entering the city, and the soldiers at the entrance were only conducting routine inspections. Originally, there was still a need for entry fees, but after the flood, the county magistrate here, considering the people's interests, cancelled the entry fees. Yi City has a large population and covers a wide area, so the city is also relatively prosperous. The first time Ali saw such a bustling place, his big eyes flickered brightly. Lin Erong asked Dalong Erlang to lead Ali, holding a wooden barrel. The group first went to the vegetable market to find an empty space and put the barrel away. Then start selling. Selling fish, selling fish, fresh live fish, Ali thought it was fun and followed Lin Erong's milky voice, shouting together, selling live fish. Selling live fish. Perhaps her appearance and voice were too cute, and soon a group of people gathered in front of them. Ah! This fish looks so fresh, I caught it in the morning. Lin Erong also said along the way, yes, yes. I got up to catch fish in the middle of the night. If I had caught it the day before and flipped my stomach today, this fish would be very fresh. How much does it cost per piece? End of this chapter